So once we have planets formed with their primary atmospheres of hydrogen and helium, they continue to evolve over time. So the differences in planetary evolution depend on their sort of initial parameters. Some of the things that matter a lot are interactions with leftover planetesimals. And so how have planets evolved differently based on these interactions? We've seen a few different examples, right? Um, they could create moons like our moon that was created in a giant collision with a planetesimal. They can lead to changes in the composition of a planet. So we've seen that Mercury was the victim of some large collision and it ended up ripping off most of its crust such that it has a large amount of core compared to its overall volume. Um, we've seen that Venus um, is actually spinning upside down. And so it's most likely a giant collision that led to that as well. So lots of interactions um, in the early solar system, collisions can cause big differences between, for example, these terrestrial worlds. Question for you, do the moons in the outer solar system have more or less icy material than the terrestrial planets? Yeah, so we saw that the outer worlds have way more icy material than the inner worlds. And so this brings us toward our second big factor in what determines differences between planets and that's distance from the sun. So as we saw, it was the temperature in the solar disk that decided what kind of materials different planets would be made of. So temperature and composition are both determined by that distance from the sun. So question for you, now that we've seen the composition of the primary atmospheres, which planets actually just kept those primary atmospheres? Yep, so the Jovian planets were the ones that kept their primary atmospheres. Um, Jupiter, Saturn, their atmospheres are still composed mostly of hydrogen and helium in about the same ratio as the sun. Um, so the terrestrial planets lost their primary atmospheres and how did that happen? All right. So to be considered an atmosphere, the molecules had to be gravitationally bound to the planets. So these were not the molecules that were pushed away by the solar wind because they were gravitationally attracted to their planets at that point. Um, but instead, it's the high temperatures of those terrestrial planets that caused molecules to move quickly and exceed the escape velocity of their planets over time. So it took a long time for those primary atmospheres to be lost uh, on human time scales, not very long on the overall solar system formation time scale. We have our hot gases in the terrestrial planets and what do they need to overcome in order to escape? All right, exactly. So our gases needed to escape the planet's escape velocity. Molecules are more likely to move quickly in it achieve that if they are warm. So that is what got rid of our terrestrial planets primary atmospheres. Um, they were replaced with secondary atmospheres. So what were those secondary atmospheres from? All right. Yeah, so those secondary atmospheres outgassed from the molten magma on our surface. Oops, sorry about that. And so as those gases came out of rock, they stuck around because they were heavier than the primary atmosphere gases. Um, these were gases like sul uh, sulfur dioxide and carbon dioxide that are heavier than hydrogen and helium. And so even though our planets are still warm, um, these gases were not able to move fast enough to achieve escape velocity. Um, but do remember that the secondary atmospheres did change over time into our final tertiary atmospheres um, and that is what we discussed a lot in the chapters on Venus, Earth, and Mars. All right, so all of this is governed by a planet's mass and its radius. So for example, the escape velocity is set by the mass and radius. Um, the cooling rate of the interior of the planet is also set by that. 
So let me ask you, even though it has a lot of methane in its atmosphere, Saturn doesn't have methane clouds, whereas Uranus and Neptune do. Recall, why is that the case? All right, exactly. So um, Saturn is simply too warm for methane to form ice crystals. Um, unlike on Uranus and Neptune, where they're farther from the sun, methane can form ice crystals and those can be clouds on those planets. So our very last factor then that governs planetary evolution is just sort of the physics, chemistry, and biology factors that are present on the planet. So one of those examples is the clouds that form on the gas giants, but we've also seen these things come into play, for example, in plate tectonics, where the chemistry of Venus, Earth, and Mars is different in that Earth has plenty of water, allowing for plate tectonics to occur. Um, some other things that drive changes this way are um, kind of physics. So atmospheric changes related to the balance of escape velocity and molecular speed is set by both the planet's distance from the sun and its size. So temperature and escape velocity both have an effect there. So I guess I would call that a physics interplay. And then we've also seen atmosphere changes because of life. So the oxygen in Earth's atmosphere was created by photosynthetic organisms in the ocean and then later on land. So this is our overall summary of all the different factors that impact planetary evolution. We've got our interactions with planetesimals, distance from the sun, size, and then the physics, chemistry, and biology on the surfaces of the planets. All right, I wanna stop here and ask you, what questions do you have about solar system formation and planetary evolution in light of everything we've studied this term?